Steve. So the crews are now on the start on the stake boat. The road to Beijing starts for all of these, but Great Britain in lane at number six. Triggs Hodge, Partridge, Reed, and Williams there on the right of your picture, Ireland, Steve Ireland. Williams. They're just coming under starters' orders. Ireland. And when they're off, I'll give you a full lane order. But Great Britain will be in lane six, closest to us. Czech Republic. Great Britain. Attention. Fastest qualifiers are starting in lane six, closest to us. OK, so they're away first time there. A little bit of tail breeze. Crosstail gets the uh, Great Britain campaign underway. The future of men's heavyweight rowing really is the, uh, being focused on this crew closest to us. And already in the first 10 strokes, they are slightly down. Look at the speed from the crews in the middle of the uh, pack there. A lane order, top of the pitcher. In lane one, Ireland. Poland are in lane at number two. The Netherlands in lane three. Denmark in four. The Czech Republic are in five. And the yellow boat closest to us now, starting to come into its rhythm. Great Britain, Andrew Triggs Hodge in the stroke seat. Alex Partridge, Peter Reed, and Steve Williams. Now down, they have found a little bit of speed as they've come in to a cruising rhythm. Yeah, they had a couple of uh, bad strokes there. Uh, crab there for Partridge at three, which just set them back a bit. But they've got into a rhythm and they've moved up nicely through and just about taking the lead now. A great view down the course here at Dorney, the Dorney Lake, built by Eaton School nearby. Host venue, the venue for the World Championships next year, 2006. And hopefully maybe in 2012, the Olympic regatta will come here. And that's, well, that's well in the future. Right now, these guys have got their uh, eyes on the first 500 meters. Look at the water. Look how the breeze is coming across the boats here, making it quite choppy quite hard to contend with but at the moment Great Britain through 500 meters almost one length up that's a great position to be there's uh, there's Andrew Hodge sitting in the stroke seat Oxford stroke in the, the winning boat race crew and just behind him there Peter Reed who was sitting there in the three seat of that same Oxford boat they won the trials and Jürgen Grubler the coach has decided to put the two fastest boats in uh, two fastest pairs together for this four and the bow seat the only gold medalist there in the uh, boat from uh, Last year from Athens, it's Steve Williams sitting at bow. He's calling the tune here, and they are very comfortably out front. Dan, have a, have a look at the technique here. This is our first sight, really, of them under pressure, under race pressure, this new combination here. OK, it's a bit choppy with the conditions, yeah. but... but uh, the, big, the big advantage they have here is Andy, Andy Hodge at stroke, his, his wonderful rhythm. He's got such a comfortable, easy gait. It's long without having to stretch for it, and it gives them lots of time to let the boat run. And he showed that in the uh, in the boat race as well. He's sitting there just letting them take the long strokes that they need. And look at this. This is what they needed to do to establish themselves. Because remember, uh, Australia, United States, Italy, New Zealand, they're all going to be coming into the field here. But if they can put a few lengths here between them and the next best crew, which should be the Czechs, the Czech Republic, who are eighth in Athens, the same crew, if they can put a, long, a lot of distance between them, then that's really going to set them up for, the, uh, for this season. Coming towards now the halfway mark in the final of the men's at Coxless 4. It's a thousand down, a thousand to go, and Great Britain are quite clearly comfortable now. Always a good position to be in the opening regatta of any year. And in this uh, Olympiad, the start of the Olympiad, the road to Beijing, Great Britain looking pretty smooth and pretty relaxed. You can just let the nerves go now, really. You can relax into it. You can start to enjoy it when you look back and you see the chasing crews coming up behind you. Was uh, Andy, Andy Hodge was saying just a couple of days ago that they, they've only had a couple of weeks together in this lineup. So remember Peter Reed, who's sitting at two in this boat here. He's only been rowing for three and a half years. He's a, a sub lieutenant in the Navy. And uh, he's now working in this four, uh, really almost a novice by comparison. And behind them, uh, the Netherlands sitting back in, uh, in second place at the moment, just being pushed by the Czechs. The Netherlands have got three Olympic silver medalists from their eight last year, so uh, not to be sniffed at. So you've got a, a, a very good performance here from this British four. So each stroke they take as we get closer down towards the finish, each day that passes in this year and forwards, the pressure is going to mount on these guys, on this crew. They they carry such a weight of tradition, a weight of expectation. Well, they've taken the mantle on now of, uh, of uh, Pinsent and Redgrave and uh, Foster and Cracknell and uh, Code. So really, th these, these are the people who are following on here and going to carry, carry the torch. 
So Steve Williams to the right of your pitcher in the crew out front. Well, there's a back view there. You can see looking down at the boathouses at the far end of the course here at Dorney. A little bit of movement around there, the wind. You can just see they're still being pushed around. The race really on for uh, silver and bronze, and a great race it is too. But I wonder if they're just coming now into this uh, fourth 500 meters. They know some of the big old boys on the side here will be watching them coming down. Steve, Matthew, James. And they'll really want to be putting in a good pressure, making a good show for this opening round, really. They're 36 strokes a minute, but again, they don't probably want to, uh, to show their hand too much. Uh, they've got six seconds on the field. That's pretty good, but they will wind it up this last 500 metres as they get into the better water. But remember, they, it, it is flattering slightly because the best lane is the lane closest to us. The fastest crews qualifying have got the best lanes, and so that's tending to move out across the course, um, the, the, the slowest crews over on the far side. Just looking there at Hodgy in the stroke seat, there he is on the left, how smooth he is with the hands moving around and away out to the catch, moving forwards. He just allows the crew to just follow him easily and smoothly, and they just run on quite and that well. We're coming now to the closing stages, about 150 metres remain in the final of the men's Coxless Four. Great Britain looking pretty smart out front, but it really is a chasing pack between the Netherlands, between the Czech Republic and Denmark. All those crews fighting out for the silver medal, but out front, clearly, comfortably and safely. Great Britain paddling up to the line. It's gold now in the opening regatta 2005 for Great Britain. And the crew from, uh, the crew from Denmark coming over in second place. And we're just going to get confirmation of that third position between the Netherlands and the Czech Republic. But out front, it's Great Britain's day on the first day of many, let's hope. Good, good, good look. There's Peter Reid with his hands in his air. That is his first international race. And his first international race is a gold medal. That's a great, great performance for Pete Reid and a great performance from that crew. So relief then, no doubt, from Jürgen Grobler on the bank watching this. I was talking to him yesterday trying to get a little bit of his feeling what was going on and all he could say we will see we will see because there is one thing doing training times and pieces in training as well. but under exact under competition uh, situations like this it, it's just a different kettle of fish altogether but, you know Jürgen has not lost a gold medal since 1972 when he was with East Germany initially then he came to Britain he has not lost uh, a, 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 t a title he's always